Southeast Queensland are home for many, including you and me. Statistics show that in 2016, over 3 million people have inhabited this area. However, this figure is expected to inflate to over 4 million people by the year 2031. What will be the consequences of this inflation? Sadly, climate change is the answer. This international phenomenon includes a change in the pattern of weather, ice sheets, land surfaces, and oceans, occurring over time scales of decades or natural processes, or more likely, the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases as a result of our activity. Global warming is one big aspect of climate change. A combination of natural gases in the Earth's atmosphere, and in particular, the increased amount of gases produced by human activity causes global warming. This subsequently increases the temperature trapped within the Earth's atmosphere, resulting in the heating of the world and the melting of the ice caps. In southeast Queensland, sea level rise, the migration of animals, the change in the shape of shorelines, and even the slight but gradual increase of temperatures are evidence of global warming. During the last 15 years, Australia's sea level has increased by 3.2 millimetres. Should we be concerned about this subtle change? Do not underestimate it. A sea level rise impacts southeast Queensland's road levels, flora and fauna habitats, human lifestyles and industries. Of climate events, heat waves have the highest impact on human health in Australia, with a predicted number of 5,900 heat-related deaths in 2100. Sufferers of the hot conditions can experience symptoms varying from his dizziness to unconsciousness. Extreme heat can also lead to drought, which can then cause psychological issues and lead to the increased number of diseases spread by water and food, such as gastroenteritis. Vector-borne diseases such as dang fever may also increase in range. Alongside heat and diseases, the strain and price of food will be increased and many communities will also be forced to relocate as a result of exposure to rising sea levels or extreme weather. Overall, the social impacts of global warming will impact the health of people of all ages of varying levels. Southeast Queensland provides a big portion of economical assets to the nation as a whole. If a rise of 1.1 metres occurs, 48,000 to 67,000 buildings, including our schools and hospitals, are at risk of flooding. 5,000 kilometres of Queensland roads, 570 kilometres of railways, and 1,400 commercial buildings would also be at risk of inundation and erosion, with a total of more than $226 billion at stake, affecting not only the regional economy, but also nationwide. For instance, the coastal zone is important for exporting 75% of Australia's crop and livestock produce, and is where most of the nation's commercial activities occur, including tourism. So by seizing these activities due to climate change, Southeast Queensland will lose a main source of income. Climate change will not only affect productivity growth, but also increase volatility in global food prices and affect people that rely on both employment and a source of income. Small farms, similar to Chambers Fast Strawberry Farm, will have to invest in protective cropping that will allow their produce to grow in the same conditions. Other denominations are electricity and transport networks. The demand for electricity and air conditioning increases during heat waves, inflating the prices and bills paid. Subsequently, to avoid blackouts, the government and the public will have to invest in generation and fit in network capacity. During heat waves, rail services will be cancelled as a result of buckled rails and failed air conditioning, seizing one primary element of public transport. Economically, the intervention of global warming can cause inconveniences that range from small losses to the capability of changing society's lifestyle. Southeast Queensland is well known for being home to environmental values and essential ecosystem services. Climate change affects regional water supplies through the decrease in surface water for catchments and dams. However, by 2050, it is predicted that in Southeast Queensland, the total rainfall will decrease, whilst the average temperature and evaporation rates will increase, increasing the number of days in Brisbane over 35 degrees from one every year to 21 annually by 2070. This can result in the migration of land and ocean species towards habitats that were once too cold. This migration then brings about the effects of an invasion of a new species, which may result in the extinction of existing species as a consequence of no adaptation in the new food chain, which can already be seen from the southward migration of animals from the southeastern coast. A rise in sea level is another reverberating factor which can affect terrestrial, aquatic and land animals and plants in coastal habitats. Three other main environmental aspects of global warming are the decrease in water supply, extreme events and the effect of increased carbon dioxide emissions. Global warming also increases the likelihood of cyclones. An increase in proportion in categories 3 to 5 will occur. Additionally, in 2070, it is anticipated that a 140% increase in storm intensity will be present, rising the chances of flooding events. Included in greenhouse gases is carbon dioxide. On land, CO2 can enhance the growth of some flora, increasing the amount of oxygen produced.
known as carbon dioxide fertilization. If rainfall increases, this method will be of benefit to agriculture. CO2 fertilization will increase the foliage cover and fuel loads in warm arid environments like South Australia, virtually doubling like, the frequency and range of bushfires and fire risk days. In the ocean, it can impede shell formation and cause coral deterioration or death when there is ocean acidification. Ecosystems that are the most vulnerable to climate change in this region include the alpine systems, tropical and subtropical rainforests, beaches, coastal wetlands and inland ecosystems that are dependent on fresh water and groundwater. The overall picture shows that both humans and animals will need to prepare for the impact of global warming and that Australia is a vulnerable coastal nation. Based on this vulnerability, the Australian government is co-funding $14 million for a three-year study by CSIR. Adaptation and mitigation are two effective strategies that are about to take place. Industries reliant on the coastal zones such as tourism and fisheries will need to prepare or adapt to the changing climate. This strategy can be put into place through detailed regular assessments and by informing decision makers of future risks which can then be incorporated into future planning approaches. By dealing with the impacts of climate change, it can protect communities, strengthen the resilience of the economy, protect its essential infrastructure and manage risks through a shared response. This is known as the National Climate Change Resilience and Adaptation Strategy. Adaptation and mitigation aims to avoid risks and prevent severe climate change by taking small steps at a time in your community, just like the changes in our climate. Mitigation policies have been created for the purpose of reducing emissions with subsequent effects including boosting energy products, reducing waste, rehabilitating degraded land, increasing renewable energy and encouraging innovation. However, in order to achieve a mitigated environment, individual steps must be taken in your community. These can include reduce, reuse, recycle, using less heat and air conditioning, driving less and driving smart, using less hot water, using the off switch and planting a tree. Altogether saving over 1,200 kilograms of carbon dioxide annually. Considering the growing risks of global warming, the steps to preventing this civilization's crisis need to be taken now.